Bow. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of A Beautiful Lie. I am your host, of course, the hostess with the mostest, Illa G. And uh, thank you for watching. I want you to first uh, like and subscribe, leave comments what you feel about these episodes. I want you to share episodes with your friends, family. Um, I, I, I do these shows to create communication between parents and their kids because parents need to know what their kids are into and have an open dialogue, open conversation about what's going on in their lives. Because I do not want to see our youth, our young men, young women be incarcerated for not knowing, not knowing, lack of knowledge. People, it just makes you make bad mistakes because people will go to the street looking for family, looking for love because the streets is a beautiful lie. That's it, like bottom line. Streets is a beautiful lie. It's only two options that's gonna happen. Either you're gonna die or you're gonna jail. And you're gonna die in jail sometimes. So that's it, this is the purpose of the show. Now, with that being said, this episode is brought to you by Ella Apparel, Signature Logo T, Ella G. Go to uh, Ella G, Shopify, Printify.com. I will leave the link in the description. Ella Apparel, where hip hop's me comfort. Hope you like being comfortable in your clothes, because I like being comfortable in mine. For the ladies, we have leggings on and so forth. Go check it out. Do what you will. Now, with this episode of Beautiful Lie, I'm going to basically talk about watch who you're around. Parents too, watch who your kids is around. Because even sometimes the poison is closer than you think. You know what I'm saying? The poison could be in the family and not know it. And it's not intentional. Because, you know, majority of the time, these are your favorite cousins, your favorite people to be around because everything is so easy. But when we don't know and don't understand and don't, you know, don't have goals and, you know, pretty much miseducated, you can get dragged in easily. As of with me, right? I find out my family is in the street. You know, go to make a visit, East New York, comes out, my family is in the street. And it ain't no, no sucker shit neither. No, they in it. They're in it, in it. You know, the older ones like, I, they're in it full flesh. Like it's different. They're the, you know, from the last episode when I was saying those guys was on another level and I wasn't ready for that level. Yeah, my cousins in them was the same way. Him and his people, they was the same way. They was on that other level. And so I get there and now it's just like, holy shit. Now I'm feeling comfortable because I like my cousins. My cousins in them were cool. Not for what they were doing, just naturally cool. Conversation, you know what I'm saying? What we do, laugh, joke around, everything. You know what I'm saying? We got the same interests, play ball. Play, you know what I'm saying? Not, you know what I'm saying? Not scared to fight, play ball, all that other shit. I had good fun. Still, at the same time, we're still having fun playing. They used to have a, a, a game out there called uh, Off Tag. Off Tag is like jumping over shit and, you know, the whole, it was a lot. It was fucking fun. But then there was the other side of what we was getting into. And when you, you know, you're bored and other things, shit happened, man. Shit happened. And just like that, that fast, you're in something. You in the game or in the things that's going around. And that goes, you know, pretty much. And you, you can get pulled into shit real fast, man. Real, real fast. And yet, you be throwing bricks at that jail cell be throwing bullets at yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, these, like, this is back in what it was like, late 80s when I was going out there and, 
you know, they used to go to this fucking game room and all that other shit. Very shaky, edgy place. Like, it looked like some TV show crime drama shit, and you go in there. And that, you know, that whole era at that time was just real rough. Real rough, rough, rough. <laughs> rough, rough, rough. Dog. Um, you know, and then, you know, down the line, because... I learned something deeper than that also. Turns out, family in the South was the same way, but this is how they survived. And when you don't know no better, and this is the, like, yo, you gotta feed your family, you gotta feed your thing. Well, for me, it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? For me, it wasn't like that. I mean, I didn't know no better. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like it was cool. I was making money. Uh, I was looking to make money. Um, I didn't want to be a burden to my mother. If you go back to episode one, that was one of the main reasons why I entered the street. But for them, it was different. You know, they didn't have drugs. It was bootleggers. But still, a couple family members back then was nothing to play with. You know? My aunt and husband carried two guns. And they, they had the bootleg shit. And that shit is just that fast. Like, you know, you, you wonder. I mean, I can say my mother hid things from us very, very, very well. Very well. Would not, would have known, would have never known that this was going down. But being adventurous, oh, let me go see what my cousin's doing. You know what I'm saying? Went out there, bow. I can remember uh, a situation. Um, you also got to be careful who you're around as far as you don't know who's in the street. And who's not in the street and who get along and who don't get along. Because you can walk with somebody, a friend... And they can have a whole nother situation going on and you don't know about it. And the next thing you know, you wearing the bullet, you wearing the slug, you wearing it and you have no clue because they didn't want to tell you. That happened to so many good kids. You know, you're like, God damn, like this kid was good. But them being around the wrong person at the wrong time in the street could get you jammed up. Lesson to one lesson to uh, to this, right? My cousin, blessed dead. Uh, I met this other guy. He was actually on a like kind of on a run for something, and I know they kind of lived in the same area. So, and it was a somebody I knew. It was their brother. I asked him, "Yo, do you know so and so?" And he was like, yeah, that nigga's a bitch. We trying to kill that nigga, why? You know him? I was like, nope, don't know him. He left it alone after that, but that woke me up to don't ask a street motherfucker about another street motherfucker. Because you don't know what's going on with them. And after that, that made me shut the fuck up. So pretty much I listen and just let people talk. Yeah, like I don't I don't care what what friends get upset. I don't shout them out or whatever, so forth. Whatever they'll live. But no. Not saying people names. Don't like saying it. So that is like yo, that fast you can get dragged into situations. Parents, please try to be mindful and open enough and understanding enough to have that conversation with your kids, teens. Who are you around? Give them a goal. Like, what do, what do they want to do? So they don't be around them because if you don't give them that reason... Or if you don't know how your child works, like you couldn't, like for me, you can't yell at me. 
If you yell at me, I'm going to shut down and not hear a motherfucking word you said. Oh, if there's no answer, well, why I cannot be with this person? Because they in the street or whatever. You don't, you know, at that time, if their metaphor or the way to get their attention is not right, they're not going to hear you. You need to somehow drag them in somehow. Be like, look, I hear this kid is a bad kid. You know, people are shooting at him or whatever. I do not want that for you. It'll break my heart, like, to see you gone or whatever. I do not have, I do not want that risk. I do not want to get that phone call. Man, if I just think about, I think about all the shit, man, that I've, I put my, oof, man. I could imagine just out the blue my mother getting that phone call about, yo, your son is gone. Your young son that you carry for nine months is gone. Behind some dumb shit. You being around the wrong person. You hanging out, being with it, trying to get in the game with the wrong people that you are not ready for. That's in them situations, man. So you have to be careful who you're around, find out, don't, you know, don't be, you know, be understanding as you could and explain to them, explain to them, you know, I mean, my cousins was, you know, we was responsible, also reckless, because uh, another thing is, um, I remember being, you know, being with the older crowd, I remember being offered drugs. Luckily, I wasn't weak-minded to actually take that. You know, that was their thing then. Nah, don't want to be that. You see this fucking skin? Like, this is some good skin right here. I like my skin. My skin is clear as shit. I got good hair, too. I'm not fucking that up for nobody. But, yeah. So, with that being said, man, parents... Please talk to your kids. Please develop, develop some way, shape, or form. When they come in the house, don't have them sit in a room by themselves and brewing and stewing. Learn what's going on with them. Ask them what's going on. You don't have to be their friend, but at least help them understand situations and, you know, sl slowly but surely. You know, if they don't come to all the way out of it, you know what I'm saying? Find out what, the, especially like if you can find out what their talent is, something that they want to do and be like, hey, how can I help you get there? I mean, it, it, you may have the roughest time possible, but if you want to get there, man, and you want to get out of there, you know what I'm saying? Have to teach them because without the knowledge of teaching them, if you don't know, learn yourself. Learn yourself and then learn how you can push that to them. Because if you don't know, they're not going to know, and it's going to be lost, and it's going to be a cycle all over again. So, you know, don't, don't, don't be a screamer and yelling at them because, you know, I know that's your fear. I know that's your fear. Because me having a young teen, a young male teen myself, fear. And that's all the shit, all that shit came back to me of what I did to my mother. And my son is a good son. It's a good older son. Both my boys are good. But how much of a bitch I be when he goes out and he wants to hang out. I know they're good kids, but they also still young. They still, you know what I'm saying, a strike against you of being black and young in America, in the street. You hoping you trust you hoping you trust them to do the right thing, but you still gotta play. You gotta instill that in them early, instill or develop a relationship with them to instill that in them. I'm not gonna keep talking in circles, but man, once again, man, beautiful lie. Watch who you around, man. Watch who you listen to. Parents develop that relationship. 
open that with them. Thank you again for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, leave comments. Tell me how you feel. Tell me, let me know if you watch this with your kids, your boys or your daughters. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I, I add women in there too, but, but that perspective of girls definitely, definitely leads your mother. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Dev love with very much with the girls. So let me know if you're watching it with your kids. Let me know how it's going on with you. You know what I'm saying? Not no therapist or nothing, but I just lived the shit. I know how I hid it from my mother or I didn't have that open dialogue with my moms. And she was a single parent fighting to get keep me out of trouble. And she couldn't, you know? And that's it. Thank you for watching. My name is Illa G. Please be careful because the streets is a beautiful lie. No one sees her shape. No one sees her face. But everybody loves this bitch. It's a lie. It's all a fucking lie. Thank you again. Seth Hose. Ella, thank you for watching.